Okay. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, delighted to welcome you once again to this webinar organized by the Nigerian Society of Engineers, uh, Glasgow branch. As we do monthly, we bring in uh, great speakers to speak to very topical issues that are of relevance to engineers, not just in practice and um, research and knowledge, but also for our general well-being, you know, in life as a whole. Uh, but today we'll be looking at something that is uh, more or less a buzzword today, um, building back better, building back greener, building back faster. If you've heard those three things before, I'm sure that'll be from uh, the Prime Minister of the, the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson, I think sometime last year, talking about how the, the UK would need to bounce back really strong and also sustainably uh, post-COVID-19, post-pandemic. These and uh, more of these concepts will be uh, made very, made much clearer to us today and placed in better context by uh, no other person but the very able speaker we have uh, already ready for, for today. My name is Emmanuel Salifu. I'm the Publicity Secretary of uh, the branch and I welcome you once again to this event. And I believe that the next uh, couple of hours will be a very, very fruitful one. And I hope you really um, benefit from all that will be happening here. So I'll be going through um, the roundup of the program for today. But before then, just to say that um, feel free to interact with us through our social media handles. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook. Uh, that's our email and our website on the screen. And um, the recording of this webinar and others that we've had so far are all uploaded to our YouTube channel. You can uh, subscribe right away and you'll be notified when we upload this one as well. So. Um, we'll be looking forward to hear from you um, going forward. And some housekeeping just before I run through the program. Uh, endeavor to keep your microphones mute throughout the session, except, of course, if you're called up to, to speak, especially during the Q&A or interaction sex, sex sessions. This is to avoid distractions uh, generally. So after this intro, we'll be having a welcome remarks by the chairman of the branch. And then uh, thereafter, I would invite the speaker for uh, the talk for today. And then you can uh, post your questions into the chat box throughout the talk, uh, but there'll be that session after the talk for the, the question and answer session, interactions and all of that. And then I'll go through some announcements. And finally, we'll uh, have a vote of thanks or appreciation and uh, we'll close for the day. So without further ado, I want to invite the chairman of the NSC Glasgow branch for his welcome address, Dr. Lucien Adediron. Over to you. Yeah, th thanks so much, um, Dr. Emmanuel, for that uh, introduction and for keeping us on track you know, for, the, for this um, event. Yeah, as you said, the, this very topic is a sensitive one. Mm. It's, it's something that the whole world, every corner of the world you, you go, is everybody wants to be greener. You know, we are trying to run away from global warming, useless energy and all that. And that's why we thought that this would be a good one we need to bring on board for people to, to be sensitized, for people to be exposed to you know, what they don't know before. Even myself, I'm looking forward to this webinar, same as you do, anybody joining us today. And, and I, I just want to say thanks for joining us you know, today. Um, in case we have um, NSE executive among us, Please, uh, if you don't mind, just to drop us a line so that we can recognize you later on after the program. But we do, we are really conscious of time today because we have another meeting straight away after this. So we we we, we need to be we are trying to be conscious of time. Um, Dr. Emmanuel, will you mind to go to the next? Uh, yeah. So the safety moment of this. I just want to bring us back to the consciousness of the COVID is still around in the UK, in the news in the UK, for example. And there's the news about the, the rate of admissions in hospitals that, that has increased significantly. So, and also I just want us to be conscious of, you know, make sure we are still following all those procedures. And uh, we, a lot of lives have been lost in the recent time. and. Even for us, we still need to be conscious. Anybody joining us today, thanks for joining us. But at the same time, the weather is getting better, especially in this part of the world now, uh, so that we don't forget that the COVID is still around. So it's still 
do the face covering. Let's avoid crowd, clean hands, two meters is still self isolation is still ongoing. Please let us stick to our local rules. Some rules are different from wherever you are. Let's stick to our local rule. Uh, thanks for that. Without too much um, opening, long opening remarks, I want to declare this webinar you know, to start now. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Emmanuel. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chairman, for that uh, welcome address. As you've mentioned, that's a, it's a very relevant topic. I am an environmental engineer, and this is very, very fundamental for most of us who are thinking of how to improve the uh, construction industry environment to make the environmental friendly and all of that. So I'll be introducing the, the speaker and going through a very short profile of the speaker, and then um, she'll present a talk immediately after. So today our speaker is Dr. Zainab Dangana. Uh, she trained as an architect and uh, have worked in the construction industry for over two decades in Africa, in India, in the US, and uh, in England. Dr. Zainab is passionate about protecting and enhancing our planet and looking for better ways to design, construct, and maintain buildings sustainably. Uh, she engages and collaborates with stakeholders in the construction industry to accelerate the transition to net zero buildings and to promote the uptick of uh, emerging and market-ready sustainable innovations, uh, playing the role of a facilitator and catalyst between the demand and supply, that is the, the users of sustainable innovations and the providers. Uh, Dr. Zainab manages and leads WITS's WITS Sustainable Technology Service within WITS Group uh, that looks at better ways to design, construct, and maintain buildings to support the delivery of net zero carbon buildings whilst also raising WITS profile as a trusted contractor of choice of credible, risk-free, sustainable innovations. With the climate crisis looming and the, the net zero carbon target even ever closer, uh, businesses across the UK are putting, actions, putting action plans in place to deliver on their environmental ambitions. And uh, Zainab launched the new WITS Innovation Network, WIN, uh, portal in March this year, and uh, she will explain how this latest development will help support companies in their, in their journey towards net zero buildings and helping businesses to build back better. Uh, Dr. Zainab holds a PhD in sustainable construction management from the University of Plymouth. She has an MSc in sustainable construction management from the University of Plymouth, and also a BSc and MSc in architecture from Ahmadabela University, Zaria, Nigeria. Please welcome uh, Dr. Zainab Dangana to present your talk. Over to you. Thank you very much, Manuel. You've said it all. Do I need to say anything now? <laughs> but uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Is it okay for me to share my screen now? Yes, I'll just stop sharing mine. Okay. Yeah, just go on. So good evening, everybody, and um, welcome to the talk today. And um, I'm really pleased to be able to speak at uh, this event because um, I grew up in Nigeria and Nigeria means a lot to me. So uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, present to the society here. So um, I'm going to today tell you a little bit about the works I've been doing, uh, but it's very much linked to climate change and about why we need to do it. So before I go into what I'm doing, I would just like to go into why. Uh, and the reason why sustainability is important, the environmental targets globally, as well as uh, what's happening in the UK. And uh, I understand that there are a lot of people on this call from different you know, countries. So I've tried to make uh, my talk relevant to everybody on the call so that at least you could take things away and use it uh, in whatever part of engineering or construction you are or whichever part of the world uh, you might be in. So, um, can you continue my screen? So, um, just to put a bit of context, uh, the reason why we talk about sustainability is because of climate change. And we understand that one of the biggest issues that's affecting the world today is climate change, which has got serious uh, and long lasting implications for all of us. And we have felt the impact of climate change in the form of heat waves, wildfires, floods, having you know, stronger winds and severe storm. And it's an issue that uh, we cannot ignore. 
And on that slide there is uh, a picture of um, a site in London. On the same day uh, in 2018, you can see that we were snowed in and uh, the following year we had sunshine. That's sort of to show the extreme weather fluctuation that we are having. So uh, it's very obvious that climate change is having an impact on all of us in all stages of our life, uh, irrespective of what you know, profession we are. And uh, sustainable development is a term that has been there for quite a few years. And the first, devel and the first definition was uh, defined by the World Commission on Environment and Development. And it was defined as the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to come. It simply means passing the planet or the uh, environment we have to the next generation in the same way without um, so that they have all the same uh, you know, facilities that we all had. And central to that are the three pillars, which is the economy, the environment, and the society. And sustainability has uh, been a very important word. And in 2019, the UK was the first country to declare climate emergency. And following that, 70, over 70% 70 of local authorities in the UK have declared climate emergency emergency. And you could go on to the website, uh, if you Google in climate emergency, you would see the local authorities in UK that have declared, and also what action plans that they've got. And this is going to affect um, everybody that works in those local authorities, irrespective of what business they are. And also the government has set targets for us. So um, they want us to achieve net zero by 2050. And initially that target was, we wanted to achieve 80% reduction compared to our 1990 levels by 2050. But because of the impact and the, um, the seriousness of what's happening, they have made it net zero, meaning we need to uh, reduce 100% of our emissions compared to our 1990 levels. So what does that mean? And I'll just sort of give, uh, put that in a little bit of more uh, context. So on the, on the um, diagram below where you can see the little houses. So those are the emissions of carbon dioxide per dwelling in 2018, which is about 2.6 tons of carbon dioxide. And if things were going to continue as normal by 2050, we would only be uh, reducing the emissions by 1.5. With the initial reduction that the government had said, which was the 80%, we would have achieved 0 0.7. But with the new net zero target, which was launched in 2019, we need to reduce that to 0.4 tons of carbon dioxide. So you can see the massive and ambitious target that the government has set and is very, very you know, challenging. And that's for existing buildings. And in the UK, 80% of the buildings that are going to be standing in 2050 would still be standing and is unsustainable to demolish all those buildings. And therefore, we've got to see what we could do to improve those buildings and make them more um, sustainable. For new buildings, the target is even closer, that's 2030. And the roadmap for that is that by 2030, all new non-domestic buildings would need to be um, net zero. And what the government has done is that they've got a pipeline. So they have got uh, certain you know, percentages that they would like to achieve. So by 2021, they would want all 20% of new builds to be net zero. And then by 2022, 40% so on and so forth. It's a bit phased, but the target is closer. New buildings is not a problem because obviously they would be designed to the latest um, building regs with the latest you know, materials. So it's going to be easier. The more challenging one obviously would be uh, the existing uh, buildings that we have. And the impact that this has had on the industry, uh, again, here in the UK, uh, and I've just picked on three different uh, organizations here. And the first one is the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors. Uh, they have got their own report and their guidelines in terms of what they want the surveyors to be doing in terms of uh, designing, constructing, and maintaining sustainable buildings. Uh, I will be sharing my slides at the end of the presentation, but underneath each of these are links that you could go onto the website and read the documents about what RICS has put forward. Also, RIVA, which is the Royal Institute of British Architects, has put guidelines in terms of what they want the architects uh, to do in terms of sustainability. And also, um, that's another one that I got from the, um, in, from the Royal Engineering um, Association, 
and uh, it's probably more relevant to the majority of us on the call. But as you can see, irrespective of what engineering or construction background we're having, all industries have, um, have actually put their own um, sustainable outcomes and how they want their professionals to support with delivering the net zero target. And um, it's very obvious that uh, companies that do not invest in sustainability or are showing to be sustainable are not going to be in existence. It's going to become, in fact, it has become a license to trade. Uh, and if you do not show that you have been sustainable or you are working in a sustainable way, uh, you might not sort of have the opportunities. And it's now a must have, and a lot of industries are looking into what they need to do. They are uh, declaring their own environmental targets. And I've been seeing quite a lot of this on the internet, again, irrespective of the industry, the retail, the um, automobile, everyone are declaring what they're going to do in terms of net zero. The way they're going to achieve the net zero is slightly different, but uh, they all have a goal. Also, what uh, is very important is um, the, a number of countries got together and they uh, put the sustainable development goals and there are about 17 of them uh, that have been put together. I think um, something happened to my slide. So um, it is not there, but I'm happy to talk about it. So the United um, you know, Nations, they all got together and we've got 17 goals and they cover everything around sustainability. So it's not only about climate change, but it's uh, things around how we're going to end fill poverty, how we're going to have a better life, have equality. And depending upon the industry that people are, they would then sort of pick on the sustainable development goals that are relevant to them. And you would see that a lot of organizations, when they talk about sustainability, they would be linking to the sustainable development goals that are relevant to them. And similarly, the um, RICS, maybe if I just sort of click that, it might bring it up. So um, they, so every organization is trying to sort of link to show which of the sustainable development goals uh, they are working with. So uh, um, that's sort of the RICS report, but um, I probably wouldn't, but I would probably just put the sustainable development goals there for you. I, I think something has happened to my slides. I, it's a website that you could all go on. There are 17 goals, like I said, and these are applied global, um, globally to everybody, to all industries. And there are 17 of them. And um, again, uh, a lot of companies and organizations that are looking into sustainability, and if you are looking into developing years, it might be worth looking at these goals and seeing which ones apply to uh, your business and what you guys could do and the actions that you could put together. So uh, sustainability is becoming a really big thing uh, because of the impact that it's having. And um, as I said, it's becoming a must have. And as a business, I work for Waits Group, which is a family owned uh, building contracting company. They are running in their fifth uh, generation and they are responsible for the design, construction and maintenance of buildings. And as a business, we care for our environment, we care for our customers and we care for our supply chain. And therefore we have set our own ambitious targets. So even though the government has set a target for 2050, our ambitious targets are for 2025. So we've set five year targets. And we've said we're going to achieve zero waste from our operations uh, by 2025. We're going to achieve zero carbon, uh, but we're going to focus on scope one and two. Scope one and two emissions are those emissions that we have got control over. Scope three then extends to the supply chain with which the companies work. So that's going to be a little bit more difficult. And the third thing we're going to do is to make a positive impact on uh, the nature through our operations, because obviously the construction, the, the construction and the engineering industry uh, is quite intrusive and we uh, contribute a lot in terms of carbon emissions. Globally, we contribute about 50%. And the operation of buildings, the heating, the ventilation, and the air conditioning use a lot of electricity and fuels. So uh, unfortunately, we're not in a very good industry, but at the same time, we're in a very good position to make a positive impact. So um, 
I want to say a little bit now about sort of what I do and how I'm sort of helping with the problem of sustainability and uh, how, I'm, how I've been helping. So I've done a PhD in sustainable construction management. And from my research, what I've realized is that our customers uh, are demanding for sustainable innovations because the government has put these ambitious targets that, as we have seen, they are mandatory and voluntary legislations that are out there. In the UK, any building that's going to be rented would have to have a minimum energy efficiency rating of E or above, and failing to do that, it would be unlawful to rent that. Just to put that in a bit of context on what that means for those that are not in England, the um, EPC certificates are very similar to the ratings that you would get for your electric devices that you have at home, your microwave, your dishwashers. And um, so it uh, says how energy efficient your electric equipments are. Similar to that, uh, every household would have their own EPC rating and they're graded from A to E, A being the best and E being the worst. So in 2018, there was a legislation that came in that any building that needs to be rented would have to be E and above building to do that. So that's sort of putting a push on to building owners to make sure that their buildings are really energy efficient before they can rent it out, which is very good. Uh, but then obviously um, it then puts pressures on the contractors and the engineers and everybody else to support them in making sure that their buildings are sustainable and uh, they are having a higher energy performance. So there's definitely the demand, but apart from that also, a lot of our customers are concerned about the operating cost of their buildings and are looking for more efficient ways uh, to bring that operating cost low, whether that is about reducing electricity, water use. I think we've got a, somebody is on muted. Uh, thank you. So um, there's definitely a demand and what our customers have bitterly complained is that there's so many products out there that the challenge they have is that they're not sure which products are good, which ones are credible, and they consider the task of selecting that right product as a making problem. So um, from one side, there's definitely the demand. And I did a lot of research and what I realized was that there are no shortages of products out there. In fact, there's so many sustainable innovative products that are out there that we could implement straight away that could help in reducing our energy, our, our carbon emissions and the operating costs. But from the supplier side, the challenge that they face is that they struggle to get in front of the right decision maker because um, the key stakeholders, the professional think that any innovative product is going to fail and they do not want to be the early adopters. So there's a gap between the demand side that um, the um, clients and the customers, the users of the buildings that are desperately looking for sustainable innovations that are looking to make their buildings more you know, sustainable. And also the supply side, the suppliers that have got these products but are struggling to get in front of the right decision maker. So. As part of my job, what I do, and because Waits is a building contractor, we sit in a very strategic position between the supply side and the um, customer base. And therefore we play the role of a facilitator and a catalyst, and we are bridging that gap. And this is very much aligned to our guiding framework as a business, because we care for our environment, we care for our, for our our customers and we care for our supply chain and therefore we're always looking for better ways that we could design construct and maintain buildings uh, sustainably and therefore what we've done is that we've got a process where we're continuously looking out for sustainable innovations and for us to be able to then put them together and promote them to our clients so uh, we've got a very structured process. So uh, in the construction industry, depending upon the uh, client, if it's residential, their um, sustainability requirements are slightly different from those that work with hospitals, education. So uh, based upon the needs, uh, we try to identify what the sustainability needs are for that sector. And this process could possibly be replicated for any industry. Uh, obviously, it's a philosophy and methodology that could be replicated. So with your client base, you could understand what's important. What are they trying to achieve? So for me, it could be that a client is looking to reduce their water usage. It might be a commercial building and they're looking to reduce the water usage. They might have several toilets, showers. So they are very specific that that's what they want to reduce. 
So once we've defined the problem, uh, we then launch a call um, using the online portal and advertise and look out for sustainable products. And this gives uh, the opportunity for market ready suppliers to get in touch and prove to us that their products do work. And when we do launch the call, we have over 100 suppliers that um, apply. Uh, there's a little bit of um, boundary around the kind of products we look for. Because we are looking for products that could be implemented in the UK, uh, the products have to be available in the UK. And also they need to be market ready because we want to be able to take them to a customer so that they can install it and we can start uh, providing tangible environment and operational savings. And once the suppliers uh, register their interest, we've got a technical screening panel, uh, which comprises of experts um, across the business and also externally uh, from other organizations that help us in screening and vetting the products to be sure that the products are good and credible. And once the products have been approved and uh, we then include them as one of our innovation partners. And on that slide, there are pictures of me engaging with stakeholders in the first instance, trying to understand what their needs are. And once we've launched a call and had suppliers taking them through, we give the suppliers the opportunity to present directly. So that has overcome the gap where uh, the customers were looking for these products, but they didn't know where to go. They didn't know how to select the products. So we are sort of taking them through that selection process. These suppliers bitterly complain that they've got this fantastic product, but they'd never get in front of the right decision makers. And as a result of that, 95% of market ready sustainable products never ever make it through. So this project that I'm leading is about bridging the gap and bringing those two parties together. And uh, we then facilitate trials and uh, from the installs that we've had, we've been able to provide environmental savings in terms of carbon emissions, uh, energy usage, and also um, um, it has had a positive impact. So that's sort of the process we have. We currently, uh, also what we do with our clients uh, specifically is we um, do what we call the Green Dragon's Den. So we would um, get the suppliers that are relevant to their theme and get them to present. But it's not only about the suppliers presenting, uh, but there's a decision support framework that I've developed. And uh, each key decision maker uh, in the room would first of all prioritize the criteria that we've identified as being important against which the suppliers would be scored. And then each supplier just has about 10 minutes to pitch and we call it the Green Dragon's Den. So those of you that are in England might be familiar with the Dragon Den events. So it's the um, green version of it. And this gives the opportunity for the suppliers to speak directly to key stakeholders and unblock any barriers that they might have. There's an opportunity for them to ask questions and all the multiple stakeholders to, uh, to be together in the same room. What the process has been able to do is to remove the conflict out of the decision-making process. Everybody's in the room, they're able to make that initial decision and decide whether they would like to go ahead or not. I facilitate the process and at the end of the day, I provide a report, which is uh, the graph at the bottom, which clearly gives them an indication of whether they should be going ahead with any of the products that have presented, that's if they fit their criteria or not. So anything that falls in those three red grids are considered suitable that the client should be thinking of having for the discussion with, and anything outside of the lab is not suitable. So it's a way of engaging, it's a way of facilitating that uptake that has been currently slow. At the same time, it's also about um, helping those suppliers that had been struggling to reach out and accelerating their route to market. And that's sort of where the two key buzzing words that were mentioned at the start, but for me, they're not buzzing words, uh, they're real because we are, accelerating the transition to net zero. Because of the activities we're doing, we are proactively helping key decision makers identify, trial and implement these technologies that are providing tangible results. And at the other side, the suppliers, we are helping them build back better. And even before the pandemic, innovation suppliers have struggled and it's even worse now with the pandemic. And for us to achieve the targets that we've set is very important that we support and nurture them. And that's sort of where the two themes are. 
our um, workshops initially were face to face, as you can see um, in the pictures there, but with the pandemic, obviously, um, we've moved to the online version, but they're still working perfectly and our clients are, they love the idea. One of our fantastic uh, uh, customer is the Lloyd's Banking Group. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you might be familiar with the bank. And we've done a number of events with them and our clients is currently trialing about um, nine products on different sites of theirs and the results have been amazing and uh, they are looking to install those products on about 2000 properties of theirs nationally. So obviously what we're trying to do is to get those discussions going that were not happening before. And we currently have over 50 innovation partners that we've identified and they range from simple retrofit products. And this include things like tap adapters that you put onto your existing tap that reduces your water flow uh, to building materials. So in the building materials, we have things like a energy generating flow that when you walk on it, it generates electricity. We have smart toilets that use 80% less water. We've got optimization and analytical tools that help us to identify where the opportunities are in a building and where we could reduce. And the fourth category that we have are around general sustainable products. And this could be things like recycled paint, um, old furniture in a building that is refurbished and made new and brought back. So the more that we understand what our customers want, that we could have more categories. They could be a you know, category around innovations for COVID. They could be a category around innovation for health and safety. So whatever the category is, we've got the platform that could be very easily adapted. And there has been a growing demand. A lot of our customers have been asking for this. And this project has evolved from the PhD I did into an initiative that was launched within the business. And um, we were struggling to keep up with it. And therefore, on the 1st of March, we launched an online portal, uh, which is the Waste Innovation Network. And the acronym WIN sounds really good because it's a win-win for everybody. And in simple terms, I describe it as a go compare website of our sustainable innovation partners that we've been identifying. And anybody in the industry, even our competitors, could go onto the portal and connect with our suppliers. So uh, that was a big, um, a big sort of advance that we had uh, this year. And that's sort of the link to the WIN portal. And like I said, if you click on, um, it's thinking a bit, but if I click innovation partners uh, on the left, uh, when it does open, you see that it has got filters and that's why I call it a go compare website. So depending upon the stage of the construction process you are, you could say you're looking for projects at the feasibility stage or at the construction stage at the maintenance stage. Uh, and what benefits specifically? Are you looking for energy saving? Are you looking for health and safety? Or you could very simply just search in the name of the product or the high level, maybe water saving. And it would then uh, filter out the products that are relevant. So I've just put in water saving. So any product that's related to water saving would then filter out. So if we click on, I'll probably click on one there just randomly. And uh, there's a high level information of what the product is, but it's making that um, process of selecting the product easier. People are, are sort of sure that the products that have been on this platform have been screened and they've gone through a trusted process. So um, they can have a look. There are some um, case studies. We've uh, try to keep the information brief because with time that portal might have sent. And if anybody likes what they're seeing, they could connect with the supplier directly. So, and this is a free service that we are offering. Uh, it's uh, no other contractor or no other organization is offering this. Uh, but I think because weights are a family owned business, uh, they feel it's the right thing to do and somebody needs to take the lead. And that's why uh, this project is all about uh, helping all parties to be uh, you know, sustainable and helping all stakeholders to isolate their route to market. Also, if there's an innovation partner that is interested in becoming um, 
um, onto the portal, uh, they could register their details and they would take them through the screening process. And should they be successful, they would then be included in the portal. And with time, what I would like to do is to grow that network to include academics, uh, to include funders and other stakeholders that could play a key role in helping to accelerate the transition to net zero. Because um, what we've realized is that even though the customers might be able to identify the right products, the next challenge they have is that they don't have the initial upfront cost. So if we can have the funding organizations lined up, then it's going to make it easier for them to connect and get that funding from the right organization and get those products installed as well. So the Win Portal was launched on the 1st of March, a fairly new initiative. So we're still learning from it. Uh, but like I said, no other uh, contractor is offering this. Um, and we are really passionate about making a difference. And uh, it gained huge publicity when we did launch on the 1st of March. and. Uh, a few of our clients have come and are now asking us to launch bespoke calls specifically around their targets and around the products that they want. So, which is great. And it's, it's good to see the initiative grow from an idea that I had that I developed from my PhD in trying to help the business and to where it has got to. And my aspiration is to develop this uh, to become the trusted source of sustainable innovations for the construction industry here so that anybody in the industry looking for sustainable innovations could go out there and use that as a you know, database and connect with our suppliers. So that's sort of what the uh, Waits Innovation Network is. And um, what I could do is uh, explain uh, some of the products that we have just to give you a flavor of the products that are there. So one of the products that we have is a smart toilet and it works on the principle of the aeroplane toilets and it works with water, air water. So when you flush it, it uses a little bit of water and then it uses air and then it uses water. And as a result, it uses 80% less water compared to the traditional the traditional toilets. And we have installed those toilets in our own head offices. And that has, um, it had a return on investment of just over three years. And most of the time when people talk about innovation, yes, they do cost more. They cost about eight to 9% more than the traditional uh, materials, but they don't look past the cost. And what I try to do is to educate them, raise awareness. And the workshops I do is all about that because I could have very simply, if my task was to identify innovations, I could have just um, send them the information in an email, but I know that message would not come clear. And therefore we take that extra and proactive role of trying to connect them directly so that if there are any questions, they can ask them and they could sort of at least decide whether they want to go ahead on or not. So um, that's one of our suppliers, which is a toilet. The other product that is uh, very good is a tap adapter that you put onto your existing tap. And maybe let me see if I can find it. So as far as your existing taps are compatible, uh, again, it reduces the water flow by 70%. And this particular supplier uh, invented the product in his garage. He was a really sort of, he had no idea what he was doing and he came across the product, but it's a fantastic you know, product. But through our initiative, we introduced the client to Standard Chattered Bank and he installed the tap adapter and that tap adapter costs less than 10 pounds. So most of the products that we have, in fact, are low hanging fruits, they don't even cost a lot. Uh, Standard Chattered Bank were quite impressed with what the product did that in fact, they took that product globally and their head office is actually in Lagos. So the water, blood, the water plate tap adapters have been installed in the Standard Chattered Bank uh, there and also in Asia. So yeah. it's really- S Sorry, Zainab, sorry for, inter I think we can't see this slide yet. We can't see it now, yeah, all right. So oh, really, okay. Oh, sorry, I don't know what happened there. Um, can you see or are you able to see? Ah, I know what it is. Okay, it's the way I shared my screen, I think. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see the website. We can't see the website, but we can't see the... 
we can't see the slides. Can we see the slide? No, no, no. You, um, I was not showing anything on the slide. Actually, I was just talking. But all right, all right, okay, yeah. We we just want to. All right, thank you. Thank yes, you. yes. No, I I was just going through some of the kind of products that we have. Right. So I was explaining it. So, for example, the um, the uh, tap adapter that I was saying. Um, that is it. Um, if you can see this, uh, are you able to see this screen? My my website. Yes. 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 So um, and it was deliberate that when I started to look for sustainable innovations, I looked for the low hanging fruits because most of the time, whenever um, in the industry, whenever we talk about you know sustainability, we think of more the high end things, the renewables, the solar panels, windmills, and all those things, which are more risky and more expensive. But uh, most of the products we have are low hanging fruits with the payback of less than two years. And that has been important because if we want to accelerate the transition, we need to build that confidence. And the only way I thought we could do that is, why don't we start with products that are easy, that when the clients want to install it, they're not thinking of huge amounts of money. So within 500 pounds or even less than 500 pounds, they could do an install. And if they're happy with it, then they could then roll it out. And that's sort of the you know, concept we've been using with all our clients. We do those engagement you know, sessions with them and we help them identify the right products. And we say, look, uh, you've made the decision. What would you like to do? Nine out of 10, times they would decide that they want to do a trial. They do a trial, they're happy with the results, then they take it to the next step. And most of our clients have got several slides. So we work with customers like Marks and Spencer, all the banking clients like Lloyd's, HSBC. Um, we are working uh, for a lot of FM companies where we manage their buildings. So we work for the Canadian High Commission, we work for Tigra Zoo. We work for the social housing authorities. So as you can see, we've got a diverse range of, you know, clients and what we need to do with time is obviously grow that portal to make sure that we've got products relevant to all parts of the business so um on my slides anyway i'll just go back to my presentation slides um i have um dropped in links of uh the wind portal so you guys could go onto the wind portal and have a look yourself uh, if you do have a product that you would like to recommend, please feel free to recommend this supplier because with time would like to grow that portal. And also I have written a blog if anybody wants to read a bit more about what I do and how I do my job. Um, there's a sort of bit of a wordy one, but uh, feel free. And if anybody would like to connect with me on LinkedIn, they could do that as well. So I would leave the last few minutes for any questions from you guys and hopefully um, I might be able to sort of um, say a bit more. So I would over to you guys now and any questions from anybody on the call. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Zena, for this uh, very wonderful presentation. Uh, it's been very insightful. I've actually picked up lots of things from here. Uh, congratulations on the, the WIN portal, the launch of the, the, the WIN portal. It's, uh, I think it's fulfilling to see something from your PhD research come into reality, you know. Uh, so congratulations about that. And also the innovative green dragon den that you, you uh, worked on. These are very great innovations for sustainability and uh, congratulations to you. And thank you very much for sharing all of this with us. Also the, the various examples of um, these sustainable products uh, that you are midwifing between the, 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 the producers and the, the, the suppliers and the uh, users. I think that also throws a challenge to us as engineers. Um, there are very tiny, like you said, uh, low hanging fruits in terms of interventions to sustainable components in buildings in, 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 in the construction sector that um, engineers can begin to think about, you know, in the kitchen, in the, in the toilets, in the living room, wherever you are, you see little things that you can um, sort of uh, bring them some ideas that can really sell uh, and be important uh, greatly to, to the SDG projects in general. And uh, I also like the idea of um, what you said will come on stream later on, having researchers and the academics come on board and pairing them up with funders. I think there are very projects going on in universities across the world, across uh, the UK especially. Um, I know of uh, groups like my own working on um, sustainable bricks using microorganisms, for instance, nature-based products and all of that. 
And uh, even though these are still at research level, it's that kind of support and publicity that like what you have in the portal can, can help to, to bring that all into limelight, connect them with, uh, uh, connect with uh, the funders and all of that. So thank you very much. I think I have learned a whole lot from this, this presentation and I guess most people have as well. Um, the questions will start rolling in now, I think. Probably it's just a lot and people are still simmering about with <laughs> the, the content. And they want to put your questions in the chat. And if you want to speak, um, feel free to raise your hand and indicate and we'll call you up to, to ask your question and interact with uh, the speaker. Um, so while we're waiting for that, Yes, yeah, so while we I could probably just add one more thing. So although I've been focusing on market ready products, but as the project expands, we are hoping, and the reason why I want to start working with academia is to start identifying those startup companies. Uh -huh. And so that we keep an eye on them and see what support we could give them. And currently we are working with UCL and London South Bank University. And um, in fact, one of our supplier has just uh, manufactured a smart hand sanitizer that was funded by Innovate UK and they are looking for a test bird. So we're going to be giving our site for them to do a trial. So I think it's a great opportunity. And also uh, there are a lot of grants that are available. So those of you that are in engineering, the government is pumping a lot of money in the area of innovation and sustainability. So if you are thinking of developing an idea or sort of taking sort of an idea forward or a process, watch out. I mean, uh, on the Innovate UK website, there's the BEAST website to the, um, so the, I mean, for those of you in UK, I'm guessing it might be similar in other countries as well, because all, you know, countries are pushing for sustainability. Uh, so, it's just about identifying those opportunities and uh, what you guys could do. Great, yeah, lots of opportunities. Um, and I think this is not just for engineers working in environmental sector. So if you're in mechanical, in, in, in civil, of course, um, uh, uh, chemical, electrical, so that there are ways you can intervene and, and key your project into the sustainable development goals into products that can um, sort of it could be recycling, it could be anything that keys into environmental sustainability in general. So um, good one there. So questions, I don't see any hand up yet. Uh, I hope I'm not missing. No. I probably did a very good job. I think so. <laughs> I believe so. Yeah, I, I think if anyone, if you have a question, you can raise up your hand and you know, use the Zoom and up or you know just to use that to to to, to throw out okay i think we have someone um, yeah, M. On. yeah uh, m kokobasi you can unmute yourself and ask a question okay yeah good evening, uh, good evening everyone uh, thanks for the wonderful presentation i just wanted to ask uh, the links to trying to connect uh, with your firm on linkedin um I, I did check on what in invention network that is not actually connecting I can't find. So what's the link in which one can actually connect and be able to network further? All right. Uh, if you can put a link in the chat, maybe that would help. Okay, so you are trying to connect to the network. Is that what you're trying to do? Uh, just trying to follow you up on LinkedIn. Um, oh, LinkedIn. Okay, okay, okay. Um, it's it's fine. I will put the I, I will put the link for you. It's fine. That's okay. Um, I think it's um it's 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 fine. I will I will do that right now. It's it is on my presentation slides. I will. Yeah. I'll get it from there. Yeah. Okay. I will put it in the message box and you can probably connect from there. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I, th I think sometimes if you search by name as well, it will, it will, it will it can possibly bring it up. So. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'll actually uh, put it there. So, yep. Did we have another question? Yes. Um, Ubi, if you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Ubi, yeah. 
Yes, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. I'm uh, very, very informative. Um, my question is uh, really to zoom in into the low hanging fruits and the uh, quick wins. If, if one wants to engage in this kind of process uh, in an industry that is not predominantly um, tailored to um, if their, their main business is not sustainable, uh, sustainable um, development or like renewables or like a uh, battery, how, how, how can we, you know, um, identify or um, leverage on this within our own industry? For me, I'm, I'm in the uh, chemical, petrochemical industry. Okay, so um, if you remember when I talked about my process and maybe if I just sort of go back to that, so we use the methodology you know, rather than the specifics here then. So um, bear with me, sorry, if I just go back. Oh, bear with me, sorry. Uh, that's okay, thank you. Yeah, so what you need to do is if you use that set of concept at the bottom, if you can see it at, on the slide, so in your industry, whatever industry you are, you need to understand what the needs are. So in the chemical industry, obviously your sustainability needs would be different. Uh, here are focused more on buildings, on sustainable products, which probably wouldn't apply in your own. Uh, maybe in the chemical industry, it might yeah. be the plants, it, it might be the manufacturing process, but irrespective of that, I talked about sustainability. I talked about sustainable development goals, which are the global thing. We talked about the net zero, which is again, a worldwide commitment. So uh, what every industry has got targets. So uh, whereabouts are you based? Are you based in the UK? Yes, I am. I'm based in Scotland. Okay. Um, are you aware of the website of Committee on Climate Change? Uh, no, the Innovate one I am aware of, uh, but not, not that one. Okay, I would probably recommend uh, everybody on the call uh, have a look on the Committee on Climate Change, because what they do is that that committee has uh, set carbon budgets for every five years. And every year they then uh, report what progress they are making for all industries. And they also make recommendations in terms of what areas those industries should be focusing on to be more sustainable. And I think you probably get a little bit more insight in terms of what area you guys should be focusing in your own industry. But uh, maybe that might be a good you know, starting point in reading those reports and seeing sort of what that high level direction and where that is going. Okay. And yeah. is that in the chat? Is that on the um, on on your slide the 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 link to it? Um, no. if you wouldn't mind. Okay. No, it is not there, but I'm happy to um, put it in the message here. Committee so, on climate change. Yes, okay. yes. So uh, this is not specific to cons to the construction, but uh, general to all industries. General. So it okay. it would be yes, it would be a, and. Um, like I said, we have carbon budget. So they are currently looking at the sixth carbon budget, which is going to run from 2033 to 2037. And what the Committee on Climate Change do is that they monitor it and they see sort of which industries are emitting more carbon than they should, and they make recommendations. So uh, they've got a lot of reports there. So for example, this was the last report on the progress that they gave to the parliament. So if you click this, I will click it just so that you can see. They talk about the key findings. There's the report. So all this information is freely available and it is a little bit of reading, but it's worth it if you're trying. And as you can see, there are about 244 pages in that you know, document. But uh, you see here that they've talked about um, the natural environment infrastructure. They've talked about the business and the different things. So you probably need to sort of find the right area that's relevant to your industry. And they give a little bit of idea in terms of what you could do. Well, wow, that's a uh, last nice photo. Thanks, thanks very much. Um, I, I, I wouldn't have known that. <laughs> yes, yes. No, the, the Committee on Climate Change, I would put that there. Um, the other thing I'd probably recommend, again, is this is going to apply to everybody and not just the in, in engineering, but if you type in climate emergency, uh, just to understand sort of the urgency of the problem and what this is having. And these are the local authorities in UK that have declared climate emergency. So, and they've got action plans in terms of what they would like to do. And again, depending 
some local authorities are more advanced than the others. So you might be able to get a little bit of information on, in terms of what is happening in your local area, because again, this is going to affect the projects that you're doing or the customers that are working in that area. So directly or indirectly, this is going to become important. The younger generation are becoming very, very conscious of the impact we are making. And I don't know if you've heard about Greta, that she was making a lot of noise last two years ago. And also we've noticed that the younger generation, when we are hiring them at work, one of the things they ask us as a company is what are you guys doing about the environment? So like I said, it's no more a nice to have, but uh, it's going to become a license to trade. And it's very important. And another concept that's becoming very important is the ESG, which is the environmental social governance. Clients are asking, what are your ESGs? So irrespective of what industry you come, they want to know what you're doing in, in terms of your environment, what are you doing socially, and what governance do you have in place? So uh, this were not that important two or three years ago, but with the net zero and the climate emergency, they're becoming more and more important. And there's so many jobs that didn't exist before that are going to be created uh, because, and I'm seeing again in all industries, this head of sustainability, head of environment, uh, you know, head of you know climate. So there are a lot of new jobs out there, but they're they, they're all sort of transferable skill kind of jobs. So uh, if you think you have got like a project, you know, our management or some kind of into on sustainability. Uh, there are some qualifications that you guys could do and very easily sort of transition into that space. Wow, thank you so much. Yeah, was that? Yes. Okay, thanks a lot. That's uh, quite an exhaustive um, this discussion there. And opening up the, the idea of the opportunities available, I think um, we want to encourage people to, to begin to look out to at how to transition to, to this space uh, in environmental sustainability irrespective of the industry um, where you are you're affiliated or operating at the moment. Um, there are lots of, of things going on globally now that um, yeah, you can leverage on to move into that area. Uh, more questions, interactions, discussions, comments? I think there's a question being typed on the chat. Ah, okay. From Engineer Hyde. Or oh, Engineer Hyde, or do you want to unmute yourself and ask the question instead? If you're available, I can just read it. Um, so, Engineer Ikechukumonde is asking Do you have some low hanging fruit projects that are linked to power? Can you share some examples? Projects linked to power, the power sector. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, uh, like I said, I'm in the construction industry. We design, construct, and maintain buildings. So, the low hanging fruits that we have. Um, an example was the water blade adapter that I mentioned about. It costs less than 10 pounds, but it reduces the water flow. Uh, you don't, as far as that adapter is compatible with the existing tap, it could be easily implemented. Uh, those of you that are familiar with um, boilers, um, we have a heating additive. So for a house with up to about 15 radiators, uh, a bottle costs about 60 pounds and it reduces your energy use, your operating costs by up to 15%. Uh, so uh, for a commercial building uh, in less than a thousand pounds, you would be able to achieve 15% reduction. The other uh, product are energy management solutions that we have, and they are more about understanding how your building is performing. And there's really nothing there. So we installed this energy management system on one of our sites, and it basically gave us an idea in terms of where the energy usage was, and it told us you're, not, you're using energy in the bathrooms, nobody's there, why don't you switch it off? So it was more an awareness thing, but having such an energy management system helped us to reduce 30% of our energy use compared to when we started with it. So, um, you know, some of these things we have are, they are not really clever, they're not that sort of clever or innovative, but they are providing those tangible savings. Um, and then, the other low hanging fruits that I'm trying to think of on the top of my head is, um, again, we've got a magnet that you could put onto your fuel pipe of your boiler and it reduces your energy consumption. And this works on the principle of physics uh, and the you know, magnetic flow. 
The other one that I talked about, the heating additive, that works on the principles of physics. So we are all engineers here. So um, I'm sure that there are products or solutions that you guys could come up with, or there could be opportunities that you guys could identify. And I think with sustainability, a lot of people are inventing things that didn't happen before. We have a supplier and what they have done is that they have created a reusable marketplace which is similar to eBay. So when you're on a construction site, maybe you're refurbishing a site and you might have a lot of carpets that you are ripping off and there's nothing wrong with it, but rather than send it to landfill, you could list it and decide whether you want that to go to a charity or you want it to go to a particular organization. And then you list it and whoever is interested would come and then um, you know, pick it up. So there are a lot of opportunities. And my advice would be uh, for those of you that are in engineering, watch out, there's sort of so many things. A lot of companies are entering into consultancy, uh, things that didn't really exist. But in terms of products, um, those are a few that I can think on the top of my head that are easy. And when I say low hanging fruits, the reason why I call them low hanging fruits is that if a client is interested, they could implement those products immediately. Some products are more, um, design related. So for example, I talked about the toilets or the energy generating floor. Now we need to be involved in designing or constructing that part of the building. So those are a little bit more difficult to implement. So for me, the low hanging fruits are the ones that we could go to a client and say, look, oh, we've got this heating additive, would you want to install it? And if they say yes, they do a trial and it works. So, and those are the products that we've had more success with than those that are more building materials. But um, do have a look on the website. And um, if you like anything that you see there, I mean, feel free to connect, you know, directly. You don't have to come through myself. And that's the whole idea of the Wind Portal. We want to make those connections happen automatically. Uh, and help sort of accelerate that route to market for the suppliers, but also help the end users looking to be more, uh, you know, sustainable, uh, get in touch with those products. Um, I hope I've answered it. I know you wanted more, you know, specific, but uh, there are more, you know, products out there, but uh, do have a look at the Wind portal and uh, you might be able to find a few more there. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Doctor. You, you really, hit the nail on the head. I was just looking at those low hanging fruits, which is quite interesting, man, you know, very simple. That's the most interesting mm -hmm. part of it. So thanks, thanks very much. No problem, you're welcome. Great. Okay, um, more questions? I think at this point, there's also the need for us to, to have a talk on um, possible engineering interventions, kind of uh, to, to put people idea into kind of products that engineers from different uh, industries and um, specializations can uh, begin to look at, especially how to measure the, the sustainable aspect of it. I think there are ways of get, putting number to what your innovation might be doing for the environment. There are carbon audits, um, yeah. carbon yeah. footprints and, carbon, yeah, and things like that we can look at for uh, ideas and products and services that are rendered in, in such in, in ways that can be easily keyed into this project. So yes, um, Chair, we need to look at something like that where we we get everyone into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I think uh, this is one of the discussion I think we've uh, uh, had with you know before, and it's, mm -hmm. it's I think it's we talk about that so many times, and I can't agree less. It's something that. We really need to be conscious of and you know if we start to take as a project as a brand so doctors you know just you know keep your door open to us so that we'll come to you shortly to, for you know for, for more support if if i may say <laughs> yes yeah no i mean the thing is that the building industry is very very engineering driven um all the services we have are engineering related lighting um, the heating, the ventilation, the air conditioning, uh, the industry is moving towards sort of manufacturing offsite. Again, that's all engineering. They're, they are looking at prefab. So I think there's a great opportunity and it's about how you guys sort of watch out and see what you guys could do. Um, there is a part of our business that are into building services and what they're doing are they are making offsite ports that go in into the houses. So all the boilers and all the controls are in that port and they get you know transferred. 
So I think there are opportunities. Uh, in fact, there are quite a lot. Uh, there's a lot around offsite. And as you saw from my presentation, I touched on RICS, which is the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors. Uh, it might be worth sort of just checking with your organizations that you are and typing in sustainability. And I'm sure maybe you might have just missed it, but I'm sure they have put in their own guidelines in terms of what they're expecting you guys to do. Because when the UK government declared the net zero target very shortly, all professional organizations put guidelines in terms of what they were expecting. So I'll probably advise you guys to have a look at your respective organizations, wherever you are and, and see. And even if you're in a country, not in England, there's no harm in having a look and seeing what we're doing here and taking those ideas to the countries where you are. Thank you. Yeah, I think I, I totally agree with you. I mean, this is, these are the, what we are looking to do to see how we can you know, adopt some of this um, knowledge back in Nigeria so that at least we can create a sustainable environment uh, for the country. And as mm -hmm. you said, I mean, anything you can do on the, on the long term, when you do the, the business analysis, you find out that, you know, it's, 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 it's going to turn out to be low cost as long as you can save energy and all that. Yeah, so I, I think just to... Uh, yeah, just to still pick on on, on what uh, you've said about Nigeria, I just wanted to ask, since no one is asking any question, um, just if if we place you, Dr. Zainab, with the Minister for Environment in Nigeria, and um, we say, okay, advise this person based on your experience and all you've done, uh, you're doing in the UK and how the UK has plans for sustainability and all of that, what would you say to the Nigerian Environmental Minister uh, which areas do, do they have to do we as a country have to start looking at? I mean, I don't know if you have much knowledge about the how the sustainability story is going on in Nigeria, but just generically speaking, um, what would you say to the Nigerian Environment Minister about this kind of uh, sustainable agenda for Nigeria? You know, I told you I grew up in Nigeria. So um, in Nigeria, to be honest, we are sustainable there because <laughs> we don't have light, we don't have water. <laughs> most of the time. So it is not like England where we have the continuous flow and we have to think about it, you know. Uh, but in terms of uh, for Nigeria, I would probably say it's raising awareness because in Nigeria, people don't appreciate that leaving their lights on uh, is using energy. So they are unaware. And I think the first element that they need to do is to raise awareness and maybe linking it with cost might help because I think that's sort of what has been the push here. And this has to come from domestic houses because you know people have their you know, lightings on. And I do have some friends that do come from you know, Nigeria and I see that you know, mentality. They are in a room, they walk out and they leave the light open. But in England, even the, in the schools, the kids are taught it's like a game. You know, it's like they've got to make sure that all the lights are switched off because they appreciate that when the lights are on, it's burning energy. Burning energy means it's emitting carbon. So I think the first thing would be to raise awareness because once you raise awareness and people are aware, I think half the job is done. And then after that, you could start sort of putting in measures. But the first part is about let people know the impact that they're making, what this is going to have and also the benefits. And this could come in different areas of, it's going to help you reduce your operating cost. And I think in Nigeria and even me, you know, personally, I would want to know what's the, F yes, we are talking about the you know, planet, but how many people think about the you know, planet? In Nigeria, we have so many troubles. There are so many worries out there. So the planet would be the last thing that we'd be thinking about there, you know? So, but at least if uh, we say that by doing this, you're going to reduce your energy usage or you would uh, maybe focusing it on health and well-being, because if you have energy efficient services in your building or you have a more sustainable building, then you have a better health and, you know, well-being. So I think it's about trying to understand what's important to those people in that area and probably, using it but i think the first thing would be raising awareness of why we need to do it and the benefit exactly thank you very much for that um and with that i think we'll conclude this section of um, the questions and answers i think chairman you have something to say yes please i have here with me this is someone that uh is uh one of the top people in the nsc our past president 
engineer Adimola Olorun Femi FNSC. Uh, he's the one that he always come to our webinar, and uh, and I'm sure that uh, the pr president uh, he will let, he will want to say one or two things. Um, sorry, sir, president, can you unmute yourself, sir? Yes, yes, please. Uh, I'm sorry, I must confess. I just sent you a message. I I slept off. I wanted to relax a little bit, and I. Just woke up to see that I've lost uh, so much. I joined uh, not too long ago. I apologize. Uh, but even at that, I got a few things. I'm sure you will oblige me with the slides and probably recording. Uh, correlations, um, this is good. Yeah, even though in Nigeria we have a lot of problems we are battling with, but it's better we join uh, the present so that we don't wait until the future, we start uh, scrabbling to know what is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, correlations, um, uh, UK uh, Glasgow branch, Scotland Glasgow branch. Sorry, um, the guest speaker, let me thank you for your time. Uh, listen to uh, just a few of your uh, presentation. And I want to say that uh, even in Nigeria now, we can, we should key into it. It's better to start now, as I've just mentioned. Again, I thank you, um, Chiyo. Well, keep the good job on. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Oh, th thank you, sir. Um, the, the past president of the Nigeria Society of Engineers. Uh, thanks for, for, for joining us today. Um, Dr. Iman. Do you want to continue with the program, please? Thank you. Yes, I I see um, Dr. Zain, are you still maybe trying to show us something else? <laughs> um, if I just because you guys talked about Africa. So what I did is that there's a website called the United Nations Af Environment Program. Yeah. Yeah. And I just went into the Africa tab. And what I'm going to do is just sort of put it into your message box. So yeah. anybody that wants to see what they could do specifically around it. Africa area. And this is not to do with construction, but globally around the environment phase. So I think it would be sort of helpful for you guys to just um, maybe sort of, you know, look at it. So it's uh, about what they're doing in that area. And maybe it could be in the first instance, you guys could try and see if you can coordinate with the team, with the UNEP team in Africa, and maybe um, it would be better because it's more like-minded sort of individuals there because obviously the people in the west are a little bit more advanced but if you could then probably team up with those in that area uh, and because you've got a similar you know climate similar you know mentality similar um building types there it might be easier so i'm just going to copy and paste and i've also copied and pasted quite a few links for yes. um, those that have attended so um yeah. and i think uh, that's all from me so thank you very much for the opportunity and um it's been a pleasure. And uh, if anybody has any questions and anything, please feel free to reach out. And um, I wish you all the best and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, would you want me to stay on or is it okay for me to log off? I mean, feel free to stay on. I would really want to stay. Uh, I don't mind to just stay till, yeah, thank you. In case someone else have one or two things to, to ask. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. Okay, I'll, I'll, guess I'll go into quiet mode, but thank you everybody. and. Um, nice seeing you all virtually have a nice evening thank you thank you very much it's been an invaluable session um, of uh, uh, information thanks for the links you shared as well and i believe uh, a couple of people are challenged to pick up what they can do and assess fundings and uh, bring up innovations you know this is what engineering is about solving problems and now doing it sustainably is uh, sort of more like a moral body that we all have to carry there have been arguments that Nigeria is a developing country and developing countries shouldn't bother too much about the environment because they need to grow, they need to build things and uh, destroy the environment for a while. But that's uh, not something to take, not, something to, not, not a path to follow. Uh, just as the past president just said, we cannot be in the past when the future is already here. So and they will start playing catch up. Uh, we continue to play catch up, which is not what it should be. So we have an advantage now to begin to implement these environmentally sustainable technologies and ideas uh, into what we're already doing. So we, we have the advantage to do it right the first time, you know, as we're building 
uh, as a country, as a developing country. Great. So I'll just go through a few announcements that we have, and then we'll call it um, a day. It's been a wonderful session so far, and I think we're closing quite early, which is great. Uh, the first announcement here is to NSC Glasgow members and able to register using the, the link shown on the screen there. Just go to our website, uh, click on register and put in your details and automatically you get all of the information required to go on with that. Uh, secondly, uh, this is an announcement from the technical uh, office, the technical desk of the branch. Uh, I've been told to inform members of the power subcommittee that um, you'll be receiving an invitation to uh, uh, next week for a follow-up one hour workshop on the 26th of June, 2021. So just informing you ahead. Agenda and details will be included in the invite. So watch out for that. Um, and this is our next webinar. So the next one we're going into practical hands-on skills acquisition sort of uh, webinar. We've always had things like this punctuated uh, across our webinar programs, uh, different months. In December, we had something on CAD and CAM. I think in April also, we, we brought in uh, something on uh, computational fluid dynamics. This time around, we're going into Python programming for engineering calculations and design automation. Uh, and that will be on the 10th of July, 2021. Uh, the time is 5 p.m., still the same time in Nigeria, same time in the UK. I will be having Chris Pierce from Atkins, UK, and uh, he'll be coming to take us through this very, I think it promises to be a very interesting session. So, and if we were to share the flyers, we would, we would pass the information across all our platforms. Um, and so you can invite as much people, as many people as possible. Python programming is a skill that I think everyone should have now, no matter your area, irrespective of whatever area you're operating. Even people in the arts, you know, need some of these programming skills. But in this case, we're looking at how it's going to be targeted to engineering uh, calculations and design automation in making products that are also sustainable. You know, uh, all of these skills come uh, quite handy. So uh, keep a date with us. 10th of July, 2021 is the date and it's 5 p.m. And the details will be shared across our various platforms uh, going from today. And this one is from the NSC Manchester branch uh, for their June general meeting and technical session on the 25th of June. 25th of June is the date they'll be having this uh, event. And the title is Defense Innovation Through Effective Capacity Building at uh, the Air Force Institute of Technology, AFIT Experience. And they'll be having engineer professor Muhammad Dauda, the provost of the Air Force Institute of Technology, Kaduna, as the speaker for that day. So um, the links are all there and we shared also across different platforms, you can join in. Uh, NSC London webinar as well, uh, will be holding on Saturday, the 3rd of July, 2021, the first Saturday in July, uh, by 2 p.m. UK and Nigerian time. And the topic is architecture engineering for social and cultural change. That's a good segue to what we are talking about today as well. So uh, architecture engineering for social and cultural change. The speaker is Ali Mangera, director MYAA. Uh, and they want to join NSC London on 3rd of July for this. Right, I think that's all of the announcement I have. Finally, we'll be have, I'll be calling on the Secretary of the Branch for appreciation and vote of thanks, Engineer Charles Okafo, over to you. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Emmanuel. And um, a very special thank you to our presenter today, uh, Dr. Zinab. It has been a very wonderful one. And um, obviously, I think uh, we have um, lots of stuff to take away here today. And also, um, just as our uh, President Emeritus has mentioned, um, obviously we need to get in now, not later on. I am happy at least the same kind of work that is being done like um, states like Lagos State. Um, I was looking at uh, one of the uh, sustainability program, you know, Net Carbon Zero, uh, five years program. So already things like this has been taken on. And um, I believe that um, with this uh, discussion today, there are still um, informations which um, people have to 
uh, go away with today. Uh, there couldn't be anything uh, more other than um, you know continuous collaborations, you know grabbing of ideas, and then looking at um, a better way to improve on what has been started so far. So once again, thank you very very much, and um, I want to especially thank each and every one of us that is here. Also, uh, this um, presentation will be nothing at all if you are not here. Who would be the person taking the information away? So each and every one of us, Matt. I want to especially thank thank each and every one of us for being on board today. Um, over to you, Dr. Mano. Okay, I was muted. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, um, Secretary, for that. And yes, the discussions continue. So let's keep the conversations going uh, on our social media platforms. Uh, send us an email for collaborations, for discussions, for questions, whatever inquiry you have. We're always available to discuss uh, ways of um, advancing the engineering profession, engineering practice, engineering research, engineering education, both in Nigeria and in the UK. And we're working on different collaborations across board with um, uh, societies in, in, in the UK and societies in Nigeria. As you saw from even our last webinar, the Engineering Council and the universities across Scotland, we're trying to reach out to all of these and have them on board. Um, with also our members, uh, we have very highly skilled people with experience in, in industry, in academia, across the UK, across the world, who are ready to to meet at the, the junction of um, innovation and uh, sustainable development for, for uh, our country, Nigeria, and also for the UK where we stay and elsewhere and everywhere else in the world. So um, reach out to us and also the, the, the slides and video, I mean, rather the video uh, recording for this webinar will be uploaded to our YouTube channel as we have all other videos as well from so, uh, previous webinars all there. So subscribe to our channel uh, you get notifications when these are all done. And thank you very much once again for your patience and for being with us. Um, I don't know if the chairman has any other final remarks before we call it a day. No, no at all. I think we've we've done. I mean, we've done well tonight. And thanks, uh, Dr. Zena, for you know taking time to even prepare for this uh, presentation. Thank you. We we appreciate you. And thanks everyone for joining us tonight. So uh, we just want to say. Bye-bye and enjoy the rest of the evening. God bless. Yeah. If Thank you, you so much. I enjoyed yeah. everything. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, EBS, you can stay back, please. Yeah, thank you. Great. Thank you. Well done. Oh, thank you, sir. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you. Thank you. My apologies again. Thank you. Well thank done. you, That's everybody. Thank, thank you, you. Doctor. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. Have a nice evening, everybody. Bye. Yeah. 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 Good, Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Touch you again Bye. next month. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah. Bye.